Hi guys, thanks for joining me today. I'm Marilyn and my channel is Making with Marilyn. Now on my channel, I do all things crafty, but on today's video, I'm going to make a shirt using the Sublimation DTF hack. Now let me show you the shirt. It turned out cute, but I had an issue with it. So if you're trying this and you have some things going wrong or you just wanna learn what it's all about, keep watching the video. Like I said, I had an issue with it, after I was finished with the video, I figured out what it was, and so I explained it at the end. Now, if you haven't subscribed yet, please consider doing that. If you do, tap the bell, then select the all notifications. That way YouTube lets you know anytime I upload new content. Now here's most of the materials that I'm gonna use on today's video. I'm gonna start with a white shirt. For my adhesive powder, I'm using this Wellicer transfer powder, and this is typically for DTF printing. I'm using it for a hack, and so the instructions may not be exactly what I follow. I have two sizes of the Wellicer paper. I have the A3, which is really large. Here's a picture on the front. Here's the instructions on the back. Notice it says print side. And then my other one, I don't have <laughs> the front side here, but it also has the instructions. Now again, this was originally intended for DTF printers with DTF ink, but I'm using it for this sublimation DTF hack. Now I'm going to leave this here because I want to talk about it in a minute. I'm also going to use some butcher paper, some parchment paper. I like to use a lint roller on my shirts. I'm going to use a regular piece of printer paper or copy paper, some clear tape. I'll also use a heat source. I'm gonna use a little mini craft press, so it just depends on what you have and what you like to use. Now the design that I'm gonna use, I got off of Creative Fabrica, and here is a little sample of it. I did this on the first video where I was using this Wellisser product just to see how I liked it. Here's how it looks on white. Now this is a different image, but here's how it looks on gray. You only can do this hack onto light colors, unless you use a second hack to make it work. But for me, I'm only gonna use it when I can put it directly on the shirt without a second hack. Now, because a sublimation printer does not have white ink, if you use a different colored background, so your shirt, where there's white in the image, you're gonna see that color. And then also, even where there's other colors, it could be skewed. So black's gonna look black, but your other colors, if this was on white, it would look a little different because it wouldn't be mixed in with gray. Now I am gonna put a link to Creative Fabrica. You can get a free trial for 30 days. If you like it, you can continue on, and if you don't, you just cancel it within those 30 days. For me, I use Creative Fabrica all the time, so I went ahead and converted to an annual subscription. All right, so I talked about this film and that I wanted to discuss something about it. So the larger one actually showed which was the print side. But I really feel like you should learn which is the print side by feel. Now it says, to determine the print side, touch by hand, the non-printing side is smoother than the printing side. So you're going to print on the side that has... It's not even a texture, it's just a different feel. It's not as slippery. And so what I like to do, just to make sure I didn't mess up and put these in backwards, or even at the factory that they didn't get put in backwards, is I like to take the sheet and at the same time, rub my thumb along one side and my index finger on the other. Now, by rubbing those at the same time, I can feel this is more smooth, this has a slight coating and the coating is the side you're gonna print on. So I'm gonna go ahead and put it face up so that I don't get confused and I print on the correct side. Now I've tried many times to get this to go through my printer without using a paper backing or tape or something like that. And I even tried, I tried blue painter's tape without paper behind it. It didn't work on my printers. I've seen it work on other people's printers. It just didn't work on either of mine. I even saw a YouTuber who was able to print directly on this without anything just by adding several sheets in the back of her printer. It didn't work for me. So I guess my point is use YouTube videos as a starting place, but if it doesn't work, problem solve until you get there. So for me, here's what's worked the best. 
Now this paper is narrower than eight and a half by 11 and it's slightly longer. So when I choose my paper size in my design software, because I have this regular size piece behind it, I go ahead and choose eight and a half by 11. If you get this to go through without anything, then you're gonna need to pick this size. Okay, so I just take my film and I have it so it's ever so slightly below the top of the paper. And then again, because this is narrower than the paper, I want a little bit of the paper exposed on each side. Now you do need to remember when you're doing your design, you don't quite have the full width of it and you don't have the top of it. So you just have to plan for that. Now this is just how I do it. Again, other people have success doing it other ways. I've done several trials and errors and this is what I am consistently successful in doing, so I just stick with it. You might find a better way that works for you. So I put a tape in the middle. I put a piece of tape toward the left side and the right side. And then because when I've only put them at the top, my printer wants to drag this film through faster than the back sheet, then I have to go ahead and attach the film to the back on the sides. So I go down a few inches on this side and I do the same thing on the left side. Okay, so I'm just gonna carefully lift this up and I ripped it a little bit. I wasn't very careful. Let me replace this piece of tape and I'll just cover up that rip. Okay, so I'll pull up on the tape, <laughs> not just the paper. I'm going to bend this over the back side and I'm going to repeat that same thing on all five pieces of tape. All right, so this is ready to go into my printer. I am going to put a link to a video by Crafting with Delonda. She shows exactly what her print settings are and they print it out beautifully. I haven't downloaded the actual driver for my printer. I just used the default one. So for now, I'll refer you to her video until I figure that out. All right, so here's my print and notice I mirrored it because it is sublimation, so it needs to be mirrored. And I do see some of those pesky roller marks. Now the video that I was talking about with Crafting with Delonda, she showed how she was able to print without those. So definitely go watch that. So here's my powder. I have my butcher paper under it. And then you can get this onto your print with a spoon, with a shaker, however you want. I just have this little medicine cup that I'm reusing with it. So I'm going to get quite a bit out of there. And I forgot to squish this around. So before you do this, I would squish on it to try to eliminate some lumps. Now I'm wearing gloves, so I can go ahead and just press on that, break that up. And then what I want to do is I want to go ahead and sprinkle this over my entire image. Now, if you use too much, it's not a big deal because you can put it right back in your container and reuse it next time. The other thing is you want to do this fairly quickly. I mean, you don't have to run to your table and do it, but you want to do it fairly quickly because once the ink dries, and it does take quite a while for ink to dry on this film, but once it dries, this isn't gonna work. All right, so I have most of it covered. You can see some areas where it's not covered well. So the next step that I do is, like other people, just kind of roll this back and forth so that you make sure all those areas are covered. And you can see some of it's falling off my paper, which is why I have this Butcher paper under it to catch it. So just take your time. 
make sure you're really happy with the way it looks. And once this covers your ink, once it coats your ink, your ink is going to look like it has a fine sugar or salt laying on top of it. All right, now I want to get the excess of that off. So you can either tap it with your fingers, you can tap it on the desk, whatever you want to do to get that excess off. And then I go ahead and leave my paper that's attached to it on it until after I've cured this. Because if you accidentally touch that now, you're going to smear it and you're not going to be very happy. So I just go ahead and leave it all attached until after I cure it because then you can touch it. I have my little craft press and this, I think it's about nine by 12, big enough for my image, but I have this preheating. I'm putting it at 385. The reason I like to do it at 385 is because that's high enough heat to make the sublimation ink pop or activate, whatever you want to call it. And so what you'll see is when I put this under there, the ink's going to look a little bit dull as it changes with the heat. And then as that adhesive powder melts, you'll see those colors come through. You'll also see those roller marks come through, but we'll deal with those in a few minutes. What I plan to do is I plan to put this under the press, but not lowering the press. Just let it hover over it, but I'm going to put this on the press. I'm going to start at about 45 seconds. I'll look at it. I'll probably rotate it, do 45 more seconds. If it's ready, it's ready. If it's not, I'll just keep putting it under until I feel like it's ready. I think you can probably see the little crystals that are sitting on top of the ink. That's what it looks like. And then you can probably see those faint black roller marks. Again, once this color pops, you'll really see those roller marks. We're almost to the right temperature, so I'm going to go ahead and put this on. I'll put the gloves back on. I probably should have had those on the whole time. Okay, so I can tell this press is hotter back to the back side, so I'm going to go ahead and rotate that 180 degrees and do it again. So we're getting there. I'm going to go ahead and turn it this time like this. I'll do it 45 seconds, then I'll put this end in, and I think we'll be done at that time. Okay, I think that looks pretty good. I do see a couple areas where I can still see a little bit of the crystals. But I think that's fine. So I'm going to go ahead, set this here, turn the press down, let the ventilation in here <laughs> do its thing, and then I'm going to come back in about 10 minutes to go ahead and press this on the shirt. All right, so since I have those roller marks on there, I need to fix those. Let me show you what I do. Now the first thing I'm going to do is go ahead and cut this up pretty close to the design itself, and it's also going to release it from that paper on the back. Now, if you've watched my other videos, this is, I would say, more roller marks than I've had before. And so I wouldn't rely on this for a business. Well, first of all, it's hack. I don't know that I'd really sell a lot of these. Maybe it'd be okay, but I probably wouldn't rely on this for a lot of business things. Now, what I do is I scrape those off. Because this is sublimation ink, in theory, if you remove the powder adhesive, even if you have a stain left, because I'm putting it on a cotton shirt, that should not transfer. And on the ones I've done so far, it's worked out great. But you can just scrape 
that powder off. It's going to scrape off most of your ink too because your ink sticks to it. And so in large areas you can use something like this. In small areas you can use something like this. And then because I went ahead and cured this, which not everybody does the curing before they actually press it, but because I've done the curing, I can touch this now and I can wipe away that excess powder. So I'm going to spend a couple of minutes cleaning this up. You just have to be careful you don't accidentally scratch off the important parts. I'll just fast forward through this and then I'll meet you back here in a minute. Now I had a viewer that told me once they scrape theirs, they use a little paintbrush and they just brush it off with that. I thought that was a great tip. I love it when people give really positive tips. Not really criticism at all, but things that might be helpful, not just to me, but to other people watching. All right, so I've loosened those up, just tap those off. Now the last thing I want to do is go ahead, take this off the paper, and then check it out really well. See if there's anything else I think needs fixed. And then there's nothing I can do about the roller marks there, because if I scrape those off, the ones in the brown, I'm going to scrape the brown off also. So last thing I'm going to do is just go ahead, because I do have so many roller marks, I'm just going to cut up a little bit tighter to my image and then we are ready to press this onto the shirt. Now I did preheat my shirt to remove moisture and to get a nice smooth area and I'm going to start by putting this parchment paper right where my image is going to go but on the inside. And then let's go ahead and let roll it so we get any extra fibers off of it. Remember I have my heat press turned back down to 320 and then I have my timer set at 20 seconds. Now I probably should have creased my shirt to know the exact center. And I think that looks pretty good. You usually want to come down about three inches or three finger widths. And since I moved that around, some of that excess adhesive powder with the black ink attached to it came off. So in this case, I'm going to hold it up. And then when I like it, let's just go ahead and gently put that down. All right, we are going to stick with that. Now with this being a smaller press, it's a little bit more work to get your shirt under it. All right, I think that's good. Let's go ahead and cover that with the Teflon sheet. And we're going to press this for 20 seconds. I want good firm pressure. Now at this point, I want to go ahead and let this cool all the way off. And I really feel like I'm going to have some staining right there. I'm going to peek at that and see.
And I am because I shifted it. Now, while that's cooling down, I can go ahead and take this parchment paper out from inside. Now, on the next press, after I'm able to take this top piece off, I'm going to put the parchment paper on top of it, do another press for about 10 seconds. What that does is it just really melts your adhesive and your ink into the fibers of the shirt. All right, that's pretty cool. Let me take a look and see if it's going to peel. Oh, yeah, that's peeling off very easily. All right, so we're going to peel this off. I like to hold my shirt so that as I'm peeling off, because there is quite a bit of pressure against it, it likes to stick. I mean, it's adhesive on there. I'm not stretching the shirt and all that. So as I go, I'm just going to hold my shirt down. And now we're getting to the area where I messed up, which is right there. So I'm pretty sad about that, but I'm going to go ahead and publish this video. I want you to see when you mess up. And I don't think there's any way to get that off my shirt now. So that's just going to have to be part of the design. <laughs> it's going to be called vintage or something like that. Yeah, those are not coming off. And I can tell because there's not a ton of black ink right here. Somehow I shifted it over. That's the first time I've had that issue, and it's because I wasn't careful enough. Okay, so right now it doesn't feel terrible, but it has a slightly plastic feel. And so I'm going to go ahead and press it again for about 10 seconds. I'm keeping that temperature at 320. And because you're using parchment paper, it doesn't stick to the ink and it pulls right off. The first time I did this hack, I used butcher paper <laughs> and that wasn't a good choice. So if you do the second press, and I really feel like you should, it makes it so much nicer. It feels so much nicer. It didn't look so much different, but it feels nicer. I would always use parchment paper. So all in all, it is a cute shirt. But I was not careful enough right here, so it's not perfect, but it's super cute. So if you've tried this hack and you've been really successful, let me know how you do the process differently than how I did. If you haven't tried it yet, hopefully you learned something from this video. And until my next one, bye-bye. All right, I'm pretty sure I know what happened here. I am pretty sure I did not cure my DTF powder enough. Because if your DTF powder is fully cured, it becomes like plastic or, I don't know, it becomes solid. It's not going to move. And so I had some granules, I'm sure, that weren't truly melted and they shifted. And that's what caused this.